Hey dudes, today I want to talk about opening up a Pro Tools session for the very first time. I also want to talk about all of the different pieces that make up what we consider a Pro Tools session because it's not just one file and who knows, maybe I'll even throw in a little bonus tip in here to help keep you even more organized. But it's very important that we understand this file and data management now so that we don't end up with missing files or change anything that we don't need to and have a basic understanding of exactly what a Pro Tools session is. So let's jump right into it. All right, so first things first, a Pro Tools session is actually a folder. So inside of this folder, there is gonna be a bunch of goodies that make up all of the components of a Pro Tools session. But when we talk about a Pro Tools session, I just wanna be very clear, we're talking about a folder and everything that's inside of it. So first thing is to start to train your mind that we can't remove or change or move anything outside of this folder. This folder is the session, everything in it we're about to go over, but all of those pieces are very important. Let's do a quick little tour of everything, and then I will go into some more detail about a couple of specifics here. Your audio files folder is where all of your audio files live. So when you first open Pro Tools, it will be looking in this folder for all of your audio files. Make sure all of the audio files that are associated with this particular session live inside of this audio files folder. The session file backups folder is what it sounds like. This is just backups of all of these files here. So when you see a .ptx, that is the actual file extension that will open the Pro Tools software. So this will actually be what engages and opens Pro Tools. But again, all of these other pieces are necessary in order to make sure that it loads all of your files and components of the actual project properly. So after that, we have video files. So if we're doing sound for film or media or anything, we usually have a video file that's associated with the Pro Tools file. And it's important that it stays in here. So just like the audio files above, the file path order will be Pro Tools looking inside of video files and then for the video file name to load and link properly. Last but not least, you have your wave cache and this is basically Pro Tools memory. So it remembers all of your waveforms and everything else that you're doing inside of Pro Tools so it doesn't have to start from scratch every single time you open the software. It'll just understand and remember um, some of the key things within Pro Tools. For example, the waveforms and their sort of look and their peaks and their valleys and all that kind of stuff. It won't have to think about that over and over. It automatically loads this. So again, do not change any of these files. If you need to change your .ptx file, which I recommend, you should do that inside of Pro Tools and not here on your desktop or within your finder or in this folder or anything like that. So leave everything alone. Don't change anything. Don't add anything to this. It's very important that we keep everything as is and we keep all of this stuff. Don't delete anything either. You'll hear me say this a bunch of times in this video, but it's the key to success to leave everything in the folder as is. All right, so there's two ways that you can launch Pro Tools software with the session that you're trying to open. You can go to the .ptx file that you want to open and simply just double click it and it will launch the software. There are some operating systems that get cranky when you do this. So another way is just to open Pro Tools. So I've already done that. It's already sitting open, doing nothing. It hasn't loaded anything yet. And then I can just go to File Open Project, for example, because we're going to open this project that has been created in this folder. And usually what I like to do is just open from disk. It's just easier for me to navigate. 
So this is on my drive under sound and then under projects, then under that sign man master session. And that is a little bonus tip right there because I'm going to come back to that in a minute. You should have a folder for your sound effect library and for your projects. So this is where all your different projects and Pro Tools sessions will live. And I have found it here and all I need to do is open. All right, and if all goes well, your session will open just like this. There will be no warnings like media is missing or anything is offline or anything like that. So, so far so good. Very successful in opening a Pro Tools session right now. Okay, so you'll notice that the video did not automatically pop up. It's no big deal. We can go up to window and then video. And there we go. Some nice pizza pie for us on the screen. You may also have either accidentally clicked this red button here, or maybe the person that opened it up before you closed that button there. And you may open a Pro Tools session and either just the video is displayed or nothing is displayed at all. So when you're first opening a Pro Tools session, this window menu option will be one of your best friends. So we already learned that we can turn the video on and off. And we can also turn this edit window on and off. So we're under the window menu and then edit. So this is what the edit screen of Pro Tools looks like. So I do have another video about this that has a warning to not do this. But one thing that I will say immediately about Pro Tools is this file save that saves over that PTX extension that we saw in the folder previously file save as if you want to change the name and create a new PTX extension. So let's say this is going to be sign man dash CM DX edit. So that will stand for sign man, Chris Morocco, dialogue edit. And sometimes I even like to do like Oh one or version one or something like that. This is great. You should do this all of the time. You should do different versions and a different save as all of the time. And what that does, you can see I've opened my finder window again, is it has created a new dot PTX session. So a true save as. So remember earlier I was saying, do not ever change anything here, change it inside of Pro Tools. This is what I meant. So you'll have various versions of dialog edit, FX edit, BG edit, mix one, mix two, whatever it is, but they'll all live there. And this is very important because you may need to go back in time because you either made a mistake or you're presenting something to a director or someone and they think they were happy with making these new changes they asked for and then they suddenly realize, oh, it was really great the way that it was. No problem. You can go back a version, see what you did, combine the two, whatever it is that you need to do. And not to mention, this is also very safe in terms of data management. If any of your .ptx files become corrupt, you can in fact go back to one of your save as files. Of course, you can always go back to a session file backup. So you can see that it has already created backups for me, which is great. But the save as function is really nice because you're in control and you know exactly what moment you did a save as. And you can even do this right before you need to be really brave and you're gonna make a really big change and maybe you're not sure if it's right immediately do a save as, no problem. You can always go back and you're safe. You may have also noticed that a new folder called clip groups has popped up. In fact, this will also happen with the video files folder. If you don't already have a session that is pre-built and organized with the video file already placed in the video files folder, you may notice that you have to open Pro Tools first, then that folder appears, then you can click and drag 
your video file or copy paste it into that folder. You may have to close Pro Tools, reopen it, but now you have put the video file into the video files folder. And remember, Pro Tools will be looking for that path. So it will automatically link if it is in fact the correct video file to that video file and you will be good to go. All right, continuing with this file menu, the first two things that we learned is the difference between save and save as. So now you know how to do that. Remember, don't click this red button here. Instead, just close your session. Another handy shortcut in the file menu is to open recent. Here is my sign man session. It will open the last session that you had open. And finally, if you are all done and you're absolutely sure you do not need to use Pro Tools anymore for the day, or at least for a while, you can go to Pro Tools and then quit Pro Tools, which will completely close everything. But those would be the ways that you behave with your session. You should not be in a habit of clicking this button closed. You should be in a habit of save, save as, close session. Then you can open another session or maybe you're just taking a break or something like that or quit if you're completely done. And that's how you should handle a Pro Tools session while you're working on it. All right, so I wanna go back in time a little bit and elaborate just a little bit more on something I brought up briefly. And we're gonna call this a bonus tip for you to build your own sound library, which is really exciting. So every project you work on, you're going to buy, create, record, trade for, whatever, essentially inherit or make and build a little tiny small sub library for just that movie. You should then copy all of that stuff out of that project that you've created or procured in any way and put into this sound effect library. So. If I open mine up, for example, I have some other subfolders. You could do this. Sometimes this is cool because you can see all the different projects you worked on, or you can just have one big folder. But for example, here is an FX folder for this particular Sign Man project. So I can always use my memory to go, oh, I think I had this really cool tire screeching that I created for this movie, and I need it again for another project. So. This is why this is handy, is that it's all here in this nice and tidy and neat FX library that you can always find in one central place or use my other video to use a function in Pro Tools to search for all your sound effects in one place and drag them into your Pro Tools project. So don't get me wrong. It is in fact very important that if I go back to projects, and my master session that we've been working on, you have to, have to, have to, especially when you're starting out, always, always, always make sure that you properly import your audio, which I have a video about, but briefly I will mention you copy or convert and absolutely confirm that whatever you're importing into your session goes into that audio files folder there. That is a definite, we will always do that. My bonus tip is saying, in addition, make a copy, put it into that sound library. Then when you're on project three or four or 10, and then you keep going and going and going, you start to really build out this sound library with all of these different unique, awesome sound effects that you have created and put into one central place. So you can always go back to them and access them at any time you need. All right, all you gotta do is follow all of these steps and you will maintain a healthy relationship with Pro Tools. Your file management and data management will be on point. You won't lose anything. You won't misuse anything. You won't abuse anything. You'll make sure that you're good to go every time you open Pro Tools from project one to project one million, hopefully. I hope to see you guys doing a lot of projects. I hope this helps. And until next time, later dudes.